Hello and welcome to Batovi Academy's Learn RxJS training. This video covers the basic step where we will introduce observables. Specifically, we'll cover what observables are and how to listen to them when they emit a value, how to transform an observable that emits one value into an observable that emits a different value, and what are subjects and what are their differences from observables. All right, so let's get started. So observables. Observables at their most basic, most reduced, is a version of the publisher, uh, publish subscribe pattern, which basically means that it, it's some entity that can send, hey, here's stuff that's going on, and other th entities can say, let me know what's going on. Um, RxJS is one of many different implementations of the observer pattern, but let's take it a, a very basic example and see what one looks like. So here I am getting observable from RxJS. And this is RxJS's most basic observable type. And I'm going to create an observable that is going to emit or publish a 1, 2, and 3 value. And to do that, I can call this observable create function, pass it a function that will take an observer, we'll learn more about this later, but essentially by calling next, I'm going to emit one, two, three synchronously right away. So this observable that gets returned, anytime someone subscribes to it, they're going to get a one, two, and three. So let's see how to subscribe to it. It's pretty simple. You call this subscribe method with a function and that function will get called with the values that are passed to next up here. So this will just log one, two, and three. And you can run this in your browser and, and see the result. So we got one, two, and three. Cool. So another way of thinking about observables on the publish subscribe, it's kind of like Twitter, right? You can right now go follow me at twitter.com slash Justin B. Meyer, and everybody can and find my clever, sometimes boring, some, some rarely clever uh, tweets on things like JavaScript and sometimes my kids. But the, the cool thing about Twitter is that anybody can subscribe to me on Twitter. Um, it's, it's, it's loose coupling. It's like I can produce some kind of value, which is a tweet, if it's value at all, and other people, anybody, can subscribe to that and get my tweets in, in their feed. So this is shown in the next example. Here, I'm going to create that same observable as we did before, but now I'm going to create two subscribers. And each subscriber, subscriber A and subscriber B, which are just functions again, they're going to get, uh, they're going to console log their own one, two, and three. This loose coupling is one of the big advantages of observables. It's just that it allows you to figure out one little part of state or value, and then other things consume it can, can consume that, but you don't need to know what they are. And we'll see how this is important later. So not only can observables emit values like this one, two, and three, observables can emit other things such as errors and when they're complete. So observables have a life cycle. They emit values over time, obviously, but they can also publish errors. So you can subscribe to more than just the values by passing subscribe an object with a next, which a next function which receives values, an error function which receives errors, and a complete function which is called back when the observable completes. So let's see an example of what complete means. This observable produces, emits a one value, then after a second produces a two value, and then calls complete. So here we can subscribe to that observable and log any values it produces, and then also log done when it's complete. And you'll notice here that I logged before subscribed and after subscribe, just so you can see the order of when next is called and when values are received 
compared to when the subscription happens. So if we run this in a code pen, you'll see that we the subscriber actually gets the value one right here before the the subscription function has completed. That's why we see get value one, then after subscribe, then we see two, then we uh, call complete, so we see done. The nice thing about completing your observables is that when they are complete, they will unsubscribe all subscribers. Now this is very useful for memory leaks, um, but not all observables can be unsubscribed. Um, so sometimes you have to unsubscribe yourself. So when you subscribe, it, this returns a subscription, which you can call unsubscribe, and that tears down the subscription. So let's see how this can be used. In this example, we're going to create an observable that's going to emit a 1 and a 2. And then we're going to pass it a subscriber that gets back the subscription. But when it gets the, uh, when it calls, when it gets the first value, it's going to unsubscribe so that it never receives, it never receives the second value. So let's take a look. And here you can see it, it got the value one, but then unsubscribed and never got the value two. So now let's get to the heart of why observables are useful, which is let's see how we can translate one observable into another observable. Now the way that we're gonna show it is to build off of what you've already known RxJS has many operators which you can use to make this much easier, but let's see a very basic example. Here, I'm going to make a number maker observable that's just going to emit numbers over time, and I want to transform that observable into a new observable called number summer, which collects all numbers number maker has produced and emits a sum of all numbers that have come before. Uh, including the current emitted number. So if number maker emits one, number summer will emit one. If number maker then emits two, number summer will emit three. If number maker then emits eight, number summer is gonna emit 11. So let's see how this works. First, here's number maker. As you can see, it is gonna emit a one, a two, a three, a four, and then complete. Now let's see how we can make another observable that's going to listen to number maker, subscribe to it, and then sum up the numbers. So here I'm going to create another observable, number summer. And when it is when number summer summer is listened to for the first time, this function is going to be called, and we're going to then subscribe to number maker. We're also going to initialize a sum, which is our current, our, our, our current running sum. And whenever a number maker emits a value, we're going to increment the sum and then emit the new sum on number summer. And we're also going to wire up any errors that might happen on number maker to be also emit errors on number summer, and whenever number maker is complete, we will also complete number summer. The one final thing we're gonna do, which we haven't touched on yet, is that a observable can return, this observable create function, it can return a function, and that function is teardown functionality. So if number summer stopped being subscribed to, this teardown function with an unsubscribe to number maker. So essentially, like if you stopped subscribing to number summer, then it needs to stop listening to number maker. This is to help with memory leaks and things like that. So with all of that, we can listen to number summer and let's see what it logs. 
So here you can see it is logging a one, a three, and a six, and then a 10, because this is uh, number maker is writing, emitting a one, two, three, and four. So now let's talk about observables and subjects. Observables in ArcGIS are the things that we've been dealing with, um, but they have some pitfalls that are pretty common that you're gonna use subjects to avoid. And to show the most common pitfall, it hel helps with a, an example. This observable right here is just going to emit a random number after a second and then complete. And we're going to create two subscribers for it, a subscriber A and a subscriber B. And they're just going to log what they get. And let's see what happens here. Now notice A and B got different values. Now that's weird. Uh, you might expect them to get the same value, right? Because, hey, I'm, I'm listening and this observable is emitting a value, but that's not how these basic observables work. Basic observables, every time there's a new subscriber, this, this function is called for that subscriber and anything that happens in here is for that particular subscriber. So in this case, a new, uh, a new random number is produced for this a, subscription A and subscription B. Now the reason for this is performance. Uh, a lot of times observables are what they call unit cast, which is this what observables are. You can see here we talk about, um, what's the talk? Observables are unicast. They have an independent thread of execution. Uh, and this is great for performance reasons, but it has these und undesirable results. Um, you, you can see this, if we, if we take this example from before, we're emitting one and then two, and we have two subscribers for it. You, you can see that observable execution is called for each subscription, right? So observable execution, observable execution. Uh, this, this example shows more about like when the subscriptions get values and things like that as well, if you have multiple subscribers, but it's, it's, good, to be, it's good to be aware of this. Um, and what we're gonna see in the next part is you don't often wanna use observables, especially if you're dealing with the DOM. Um, when you have things that are the source of data, like what a user's input might be to a element, that should not be an observable. What that will be is a subject, or we'll see later, a behavior subject. So what we need to solve this problem so that when you can listen to something and all listeners are gonna get the exact same thing. What we need is a subject. So RxJS has subjects, and here I can create a subject, and I'm gonna use TypeScript to say this subject should only emit numbers. And then you can have as many subscribers as you want to that subject, and they will all receive the same value. So here, subjects have the next and complete and error methods on them. And when we call next with that random number, you'll see both observer A and observer B get the exact same random number. So this is what we'll want uh, in, in the next exercise. So we are ready for that. Thank you, see you there.